And with no further ado, I'm going to bring up Mr. Rob Genovese. Rob, thanks for being here today, my friend. Super excited to have you. I'm going to turn the reins over to you. Great. Thanks, Travis. Great to be here. Appreciate it. So uh, as Travis said, I'm a branding coach. And what we're really talking about here is the concept of how to make your competition irrelevant. And that came about because when I met business owner after business owner, um, competition was an issue, but also not just that, but how do I become the chosen one in my industry? It's not just about sidelining the competition as much as how do you be the one that people only want to go to? So for you as a business owner, if you're building your own business, mad respect to you, it's not an easy thing, but it's probably the ride of a lifetime. But what is the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge for most business owners is probably that number one thing that nobody really wants to deal with, but it's something that you have to deal with and you either get good or you're gone. And that's finding clients. Now, when I first started out, you know, I wanted to find clients as well. That's one thing that I needed right away, right? So we get in this mode when we start out and it's, I need to find the next client, right? When you're just starting out, it's lean. So you're looking for the next client. After that, you've got some clients in there. So what are you looking for next? Everybody's looking for more clients, right? We need more clients, right? Why? We need more revenue. And in order to make more revenue, we need more clients. And if you've been around for a while owning your own business, after a while, you kind of had some great clients, some dream clients, and maybe you had some not so great clients, some nightmare clients, right? So we move into this next stage, which is I move from finding more clients to I want to find better clients. And what does better clients really translate to? What that really means is higher paying clients or clients that are more professional or clients that don't question our expertise. All these things, depending on your industry, any one of these can be a factor in that finding client mode. So what are you tired of doing? You know, I know some people who love sales. They thrive on sales. They love the word sales. You know, get them in front of a potential client and they go to work. The adrenaline starts pumping and they're able to close that deal. But if you're not like that, like I'm not like that, if you're like most people, most business owners, we don't really like sales per se. We want people to buy, of course, but we don't want to sell them. And for good reason. We know people don't really want to be sold. What they really want is they want a solution to their challenge. What happens is most people, whether they're networking or advertising, they maybe get if you're a consultant and you get that consult call or whatever initial communication you have where you are speaking to this potential client and you are feeling like maybe they're slipping away and you change into sales mode, or maybe you're right there from the beginning and you quite have, you haven't quite figured out how do I close this client? How do I make them a client of mine so I can get to what I really want to do, which is sell the thing that I went into business to sell. And what we end up doing is we end up doing this over and over and over again. And for a lot of people, it's a grind that they don't want to be a part of. They'd rather just, have you ever had this thought? I'd rather have clients just come to me, right? That takes that kind of grind out of it. And it puts the focus on why you went into business in the first place, doing the thing you do. Gary Vaynerchuk, right? Greatest companies in the world don't sell, they brand. And Gary would know, you know, if you don't know who Gary is between all the F-bombs, he's got a great message. Uh, he just wants people to be happy in that, making money for the mission, but really just not selling as much as you are amplifying who you are. And nobody could argue that Gary V is an authentic version of himself. There is no other Gary V and hence the way he talks, he just brings it like he is. But he's saying, you've got a brand. You don't want to sell. Why? Because people love brands and they love to buy. They don't want to be sold. So what if you had a superpower to make business appear? You know, wouldn't it be great where if you just, you know, put up a post on LinkedIn or produced a video and put it on YouTube. And suddenly people are like, I got to hire this person. I got to buy from this person. And they just reached out to you and they said, how much? Let me send you over. Let me sell you the money. Let me Venmo the money or whoever. They don't even question it. They just pay and you're in business. Wouldn't that be great? What if you had that superpower to make that happen? You know, they call them rainmakers in other industries. You want to make business appear. 
Well, I want to talk about that kind of thing as it pertains to branding, because, you know, branding is has the power to be able to do that. Here's what I hear from a lot of clients of mine. You know, they really want to have that pipeline always full and have an endless flow of clients. But it's not just that. Haven't we all had a client who, you know, we loved them. They loved us. It was like kumbaya. They paid our fee. They were happy with the process. They trusted your expertise. And in the end, they paid off the balance. And better yet, they referred you to other great people like themselves. That's the idea here. Everybody wants that endless flow of clients who love them. I'm no different. You're no different. And you can have this. It's just a matter of being able to find what your true brand is and amplifying it. So, so how do we do that? Well, first of all, we want to talk about the power of branding. We want to say that this is a way where you don't have to pitch anymore. You don't have to be competing with your competition or with yourself sometimes, trying to overcome your hangups in order to get better at that pitch. Well, I say we don't want to pitch necessarily. We just want to put out there what we do, and we want people to understand it, hear our message, and hire us. So let's look at an example of some real-life uh, businesses that that do well with their brand you know on the left here we've got you know it's not even a word on the side of the cup anymore right so we just know what that is automatically we've identified with it they've got a whole following of people that just love who they are well on the other side of that equation is the other coffee company right they don't even need a word they just got their logo mark on there and we all know that starbucks people don't go to duncan and Duncan people don't go to Starbucks, right? It's not that there's a rivalry necessarily, but each has its own audience. Now think about this for a second. They both sell the same thing, or do they? Well, yes, true, they both sell coffee, right? And everybody goes to their favorite place in the morning first thing before heading to work. Some of the people go to Duncan, some go to Starbucks. But how is it that both of them can be massively successful brands selling basically the same product and still be so successful, still do so well. Isn't there not enough to go around? Well, the abundant mindset says, no, there's enough for everybody. But the thing is, if you want to get your piece, you've got to be unique. You've got to speak to a certain audience. Now, look at this for a second. If you can see this, you know, on the left is one of the stores. Now, you've walked in here. I want you to look at the environment. It's very lit up, but it's also a little bit sterile. You know, there's you walk around that cooler, around that display, you place your order, they fulfill it, you walk down to the end, you pick it up. See that white, that white bar there, that kind of table with that hard chair underneath it. Now, does this look inviting? Do you really want to sit down here and enjoy your coffee? No. And guess what? They don't want you to. They want you to get in line, get your coffee, and get out. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. That's basically what they do. But look at the right side. Look at Starbucks. We all know this brand. We've all visited this brand. If to just meet with somebody, even if you don't like coffee, don't you just want to hang out here? Look at the difference. Look at the mood lighting. Look in the background. The people are sitting in soft, cozy chairs. They're, they're sinking into an easy chair, reading on their laptops, They've got tables next to them with their favorite drink there. You know, there's mood lighting all around, sconces on the wall. If you look in the foreground and you see even their bar, in contrast to Duncan's, looks more inviting. It looks like a place you want to belly up to and, you know, sit. Even those, those chairs there, which are not really cushy chairs, but they do have cushions on them. See the lighting, the Edison lights overhead. And even in front of them, there's pictures of, you know, treats that you can get with your coffee. You know, it's very inviting. It makes you want to sit there. That's the difference. You see, Starbucks people want you to come and hang out. Duncan, not so much. But there's room enough in the world for both to win. And that's the point. None is better than the other. Starbucks is not better than Duncan, and Duncan's not better than Starbucks. They both appeal to a certain audience. And that's the key right there. You want to appeal to a specific audience. So when we talk about really what is branding, most people think, well, it's the logo, it's the name, it's the tagline. You know, it's my phone, it's, it's my clothing, you know, I'm repping my brand. What is branding? 
there's a lot of controversy over this, and nobody's actually really clear as to what it is. But I want to clear it up what it is. So essentially, here's what it does. Because if we don't know what it does, we don't really know what it is. Now, branding raises the value of your business so you can charge more now and sell it for more later. What does that mean? Well, it means that when you build your business, you build your business. But when you're building a brand, you're doing something that makes it so that you are very unique from other people who do the same thing. When you become unique, you stand out. And everybody knows this. You don't want to blend in. You want to stand out. And that's essentially what branding is. It is that differentiation that is at the heart of branding. And what that means is you've got to discover what's your unique value proposition or your unique selling proposition, or there's many ways that it's said. But broken down, what is it really? Is why should I choose you over somebody else? That's what your potential customer is asking, and that's what you've got to give them. Barbara Corcoran, my favorite shark by far, she said, now she built the Corcoran Group. Everybody knows an incredibly successful real estate company in Manhattan. She said, they paid me much too much money for my business. They paid me for my sales, but then they paid me double for my brand. Branding is everything. Imagine that. They paid her double for her brand. And who better to speak with credibility than Barbara Corcoran, Corcoran coming from very modest means to a very wealthy woman today? So what are we looking to do here? We're looking to create super fans. You know, there's a notion out there that you don't need millions of followers. You only need 1,000 true fans. That anything you do once you have 1,000 true fans, anything you do, any product or service you put out there, they're buying. Why? Because they're loyal to you. You've proven that you can be trustworthy with their money, that you're constantly delivering value, that your product or service is superior, and that it makes them happy. It makes them feel like they're a part of your world and your brand. These are super fans, and everybody wants super fans because once you got them, they're so loyal. Not only do they keep buying from you, but they keep talking to you or they keep talking to others about you. They keep recommending you to their friends. So having super, super fans, you know, how do you actually do that? And this is one of the paradoxes. It's focus. I hear it and see it all the time. And most business owners will do this. They will want to appeal to everybody. When asked, who's your ideal client? Who, who should I send your way? And they're like, well, everybody, if they got a pulse, I want them. Right. If you know, if you're, you know, in the the um, eyewear business, you're like, if they got eyes, they're a customer for me. No, they're not. Well, here's the thing: the paradox of focus says this. Even though if you don't focus, you know you want as much business as possible, but you can't have it because no matter what you do, no matter how awesome you are or how awesome your product is, some folks are going to buy from Apple and some folks are going to buy from Android. Right? It doesn't really matter. There is a brand out there for everybody. And even though you can do everything right, not everybody's going to be for you, right? Just like you can't be friends with everybody, you can't have everybody as your client. So what you want to do is you want to focus down. The idea behind focus is this, that if you appeal to a very niched audience and you become known in that audience for that one thing, that you become the go-to person in that field, what basically happens is you develop a legion of super fans who will not go anywhere else. But what happens is this, when you become an expert and they go to you, they go, by the way, I know you do this thing, but do you do also do you also do this over here? It's kind of an ancillary thing, your business. And you go, why? Of course we do. We do that as well. Here's the thing. You've positioned yourself as a trusted advisor and expert. They want to deal with you, your company, your brand, so that's why they want to buy from you um, in other ways and give them those ways. So what do you got to do? You got to identify your super fan, demographics, psycho, psychographics. You know, where are they from? Where do they live? Are they married? Are they single? Do they have kids? What's their income level? What's their belief system, their values? You know, what are their behavior styles? If you can identify this, you know, look at who your current super fans are. You must have some. That'll give you an indicator. Look for more like them. You also want to clarify your message. You know, what does that mean? It means 
you don't say everything you do. You want to have a lead product and a lead message that will attract that ideal client to you so that they can trust you with their money, at least for that thing. And once you establish that you are trustworthy, that you do, do deliver on it, then maybe they'll open it up for more business. But you've got to leave with one specific message. If you say, I do it all, they hear, I don't do anything. Because the mind can't process and can't connect the dots as to what you do. They need to know the one thing you do, and you can only be known for the one thing. And here's the last part. You want to pound this daily everywhere. You want to pound it. What does that mean? It means once you've identified that super fan, that ideal client, once you've clarified your message so that when you speak, they hear it and it registers with them. In other words, in their mind, they're going, wow, they're speaking right to me. They're for me. Therefore, I want to buy from them. That's like Apple. You know, people line up around the block to buy a product nobody's ever seen before. And when the iPhone came out, that's exactly what happened because they had loyal fans, right? So they've identified them. They spoke to them. You know, you're for me. And then what do you do? Pound it daily everywhere. That means what you write, say, and record. It means when you write an article, right? When you speak in person, when you meet somebody or you're at a speaking event or you're at a networking event, you're speaking to people. It's what you're saying. You're saying the same thing. It's what you record, your videos. If you're putting out videos, a podcast, your message is always the same. It's always focused. It's always clear. And you know who you're speaking to and speak to that ideal audience. Speak to those super fans because when you speak directly to them, you will attract more of them. You want the loyalty. You want to be able to serve them so that they can recommend you to other people. So that's my message for today. I want to thank you for listening. This has been absolutely tremendous. And I would love to meet you someday um, and maybe answer some of your questions and talk more about how this can have a major great effect in your life.